Hi everyone, my name is Isaac and I've been using the Google Pixel 3 XL for the last few weeks and my time with it so far has actually been pretty good. But the launch of this device has been pretty rocky to say the least. There's been harder problems, softer problems, just generally weird things popping up and it's been a really awful launch for this device. But besides all that, I want to talk about my experience with this phone, especially with the camera because it's kind of incredible. Let's talk about that first. So this phone has three cameras, but not what you'd expect. There's two 8 megapixel selfie cameras, one standard and one wide angle, and on the back, one single 12 megapixel rear camera. Now this phone takes some of the best selfies I've really ever tested, and also you have that great portrait mode as well that cuts out your face from the background and really achieves some great results. And also it has a wide angle camera here too, which basically every phone should have. It looks great, you can fit more people in the shot, and also just takes some really weird kind of different perspective shots as well. The wide angle camera is, is kind of awesome. And pictures with the main 12 megapixel rear camera are almost always perfect. You pick up this phone and it's really hard to take an actual bad shot. The HDR is stellar, it's balanced, colors are vibrant and accurate, but the contrast may be a bit strong for some people as shots turn out very contrasty. It is a personal preference though, and for me, I definitely really like it. During my time shooting with this phone, I've definitely been very impressed so far, and I think you will definitely be too. Now, in terms of a comparison to other flagship smartphones, I actually did a full video comparing the iPhone XS Max to the Pixel 3 XL and the Galaxy Note 9, so be sure to check that out, link in the description and the card, wherever it is on the screen, just to give you a little bit of a benchmark in terms of how this phone performs. But in general, shots are incredible. For portrait mode, the phone also does a pretty good job cutting out subjects from the background and producing a very natural blur. Now keep in mind, this is all done with basically one camera and that's it. While most other phones, they require two cameras or they can't shoot things other than faces. This phone does it all with one camera and yeah, it looks great. Even something as difficult as cutting out a straw from the background in this shot, that is crazy good for a single camera portrait shot. But the hits keep coming. The Pixel also features some great low light performance for photos, and it does definitely take some good shots. But wait, this is actually some pre-release software features that I'm gonna show you right now, courtesy of XDA, link in the description. It's called the Night Sight feature, and it does something really incredible. And the name couldn't be any more fitting. Kind of like the Huawei P20 Pro, this phone has a specific night mode feature that takes pictures in the dark and turns them into shots that almost look like they're daytime pictures. And this is actually just the beta version of this feature, so it's going to get better and better over time. But you don't have to run out right now and buy a Pixel 3 or 3 XL if you want this feature. It's actually coming to the older Pixel devices as well, like the Pixel 2 and Pixel 1. So that's pretty cool. Now you're not going to use this feature every single time you're taking a picture in the dark. It takes a few seconds, you have to hold still, and sometimes it can be a bit unnatural too, and you don't want that look. But when you do use this feature, it just blows my mind and also the minds of many other people as well, including Nick Crompton. So all these camera specific features for photos are pretty insane, but when it comes to video, it's just all right. You can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second. You can't shoot 60 frames per second 4K video and results are just okay. They come out a bit dull and lifeless sometimes with even a little bit of a purplish tint to some shots as well. The videos do have really good stabilization though. It's very, very smooth, but the audio and video mode is just not great at all. Okay, I think you get it by now, the camera is great on this device, I'm going to stop talking about it. But besides the camera, there's also a whole phone to talk about here as well. Starting out with the design and the hardware. So we got to talk about that notch very briefly. I've been using this phone for about three weeks now and honestly, by now, I don't really notice it too much. Now, it is still definitely there, especially when watching videos and you fill the whole screen. It really does stick out. But after a little while, you kind of forget the notch is really even there, and you just sort of get used to it. It doesn't look good though, I'm not going to admit that. But one of the reasons for the notch though are those dual front-facing stereo speakers, which mostly sound excellent. I don't know if it's worth having the notch though for those speakers, but without a doubt, they do sound good. 
And of course, below the notch, we have a 6.3 inch quad HD display up front, and it is definitely gorgeous, especially compared to last year's kind of abysmal display. Colors look awesome, there's no major color shifts or anything on this panel, but I wish it was a bit brighter, especially outdoors. And despite that back glass design looking and feeling incredible, it has had a lot of controversy so far with scratching and being very easily damageable. Now for me, as soon as the phone was out of the box, case on, you gotta do that. There's no way you can use this phone naked. You're just asking for trouble with this device. I do wish the phone was a bit more durable without some sort of case or skin, but I guess that's just what Google did this year. You're also getting IP68 water resistance with this design. There's no headphone jack here, but Google actually included a pair of actually decent USB-C earbuds in the box that work with most other phones and computers, so at least that's kind of a good move. We also have a fast rear fingerprint scanner, good clicky buttons in good positions, as well as no SD card slot here as well. Google's strongest suit really isn't hardware. They're still working on it, they're getting better and better, they're still developing it, but where the real magic happens on this phone is in the software. The Pixel Launcher is fluid and beautiful, with all the best features from last year on this device as well, like the offline and online audio recognition, squeeze for Google Assistant, guaranteed fast software updates for at least two years, I think it was, and the general look and animations for me are also features. They're so clean, so minimal, it's just so smooth. There's also the countless amazing Google Assistant features built into this phone too. If you're part of the Google Home ecosystem, you have that tie-in, as well as some of the new features like the call answering feature, which is very cool, but it's not available in Canada just yet. I can admit the software may feel a bit boring. It is missing some of the features you get on a Samsung phone or a Huawei phone, but generally here, this is kind of my ideal version of Android, as simple as it can be, with still some cool features and enough to make it Interesting, not just stock Android, the Pixel Launcher is miles above stock Android. But if you want a whole bunch of features, just crazy amounts of features everywhere, this is not the phone for you. It's a bit of a nitpick, but I wish this phone had at least 6GB of RAM instead of just 4 on this device like last year, because when multitasking, you will have some occasional app reloads at times. Not the end of the world or anything, but it can be a bit annoying sometimes. And powering the whole show, the 3430 mAh battery almost always gets me a full day of usage, but not really too much more. For intensive photo taking, email, social media, and catching up on videos, the phone always seems to last for me, and it should last for you as well. The phone also of course has fast charging and wireless charging here as well, but only full wireless charging speeds if you buy the Pixel Stand charger. If not, your wireless charging speeds are slower than they could possibly be. The Pixel Stand is definitely a stellar wireless charger, but to achieve 10 watt speeds that almost every other phone can achieve with any wireless charger that supports it, isn't completely fair. Okay, so quick summary here. During Google's keynote, with one single sentence, they explained the entire Pixel line so far, and I couldn't say it better myself. We designed the world's best camera and put in the world's most helpful phone. That's what this phone is at its core. It's not the best looking, fastest, most feature filled, or most unique device. It's the best phone camera that I've personally used with the most intelligent and useful software built into Android. And for me, those are two things I definitely do like on this phone. But we're in a world right now with an incredibly competitive smartphone market. There's great flagship phones with unique, excellent features, awesome mid-range phones, and also great deals like the OnePlus 6T, Poco phone, and the list goes on. You have to decide if having the world's best phone camera and some incredibly smooth and refined software is enough for you over almost every other device on the market. I'm gonna let you decide in the comments down below, would you ever buy the Pixel 3 or 3XL? I wanna hear your thoughts. And thank you for watching.